specifics of high tide and low tide and understand their frequency and predictability. Uh, additionally, we'll examine how the shape of the shoreline influences tides, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of swimming in different tidal stages, and learn about the dangers of rip currents. Finally,
also lead to stronger currents and waves, making swimming conditions more challenging, uh, especially for less experienced swimmers. Low tide, on the other hand, exposes more of the beach and often reveals tidal pools, sandbars, and other interesting coastal features. This can be ideal for beach combing, exploring marine life, and providing a more gradual entry into the water. However, low tide can also create hazards such as exposed rocks and stronger rip currents, making it important for swimmers to exercise caution and be aware of their surroundings. Rip currents are powerful, narrow channels of fast-moving water that flow from the shore out to the sea. They're most common within a few hours of low tide when the water is receding. Rip currents can form when waves break strongly in some locations and weaker in others, creating a narrow, concentrated flow of water that moves rapidly offshore. These currents can be dangerous for swimmers as they can quickly pull them from the shore. Understanding rip currents is important for ensuring safety at the beach. One way to identify a rip current is to look for a channel of churning, choppy water, a difference in water color, or a line of foam, seaweed, or debris moving out towards the ocean. If caught in a rip current, it's essential to remain calm and avoid swimming directly against the current. You will not win. Instead, Swimmers should try to swim parallel to the shore to escape the narrow current and then head back to the beach once free from its pull. Fishing is another activity profoundly influenced by the tides. Many experienced anglers pay close attention to tidal movements as the best time to fish often coincide with certain tidal stages. Fish are more active likely to feed during specific tidal periods, influenced by the movement of water and the availability of food. During incoming tides, also known as uh, flood tides, water levels rise, bringing in nutrients and small organisms that attract fish. This influx of food can stimulate feeding activity, making it an ideal time for fishing. Similarly, the outgoing tide or ebb tide can also be productive as fish take advantage of the movements of water to capture prey. Tidal currents can concentrate fish in certain areas such as channels and estuaries, creating prime fishing spots. High tide is particularly advantageous for fishing in shallow areas and estuaries as it allows fish to move closer to the shore and access feeding grounds. Uh, conversely, low tide can expose areas that are usually underwater, revealing structures such as um, rocks, reefs, and sandbars where fish may congregate. Understanding these patterns and adjusting fishing strategies accordingly can greatly enhance the chances of a successful catch. The predictability of tides is a remarkable aspect of our natural world, providing a sense of order and rhythm to coastal life. Tide tables, uh, available for countless locations around the globe, offer detailed information on the timing and height of tides allowing individuals to plan their activities with precision. These tables are invaluable tools for fishermen, sailors, and beachgoers, ensuring safety and optimizing the enjoyment of coastal environments. As we explore the science of tides, it's essential to acknowledge the role of both the moon and 
the sun in generating these rhythmic movements. While the moon exerts the primary gravitational influence, the sun also plays a significant role. When the gravitational forces of the moon and the sun align, such as during a full moon or during a new moon, we experience spring tides. The spring tides are characterized by higher high tides and lower low tides, resulting in a greater tidal range. Conversely, when the gravitational forces of the moon and the sun are at right angles to each other, such as during the first and third quarters of the moon, we experience neap tides. Uh, neap tides have lower high tides and higher lower tides, resulting in a smaller tidal range. Understanding these tidal cycles is crucial for navigating coastal waters and planning activities that depend on tidal movements. Mariners, for example, rely on accurate tide predictions to ensure safe passage through shallow waters and to avoid grounding their vessels. Coastal engineers use tidal data to design structures such as uh, piers, docks, and seawalls, uh, accounting for the expected tidal ranges and the impact of tidal currents. Tides also play a vital role in shaping coastal ecosystems. The intertidal zone, the area between high and low tides, is a dynamic habitat that supports a diverse array of marine life. Organisms living in this zone have adapted to the changing conditions of water exposure and submersion. For example, uh, barnacles and mussels attach themselves to rocks and other surfaces, surviving both the harsh conditions of low tide and the underwater environment of high tide. Snails and other intertidal creatures move with the tides, finding food and shelter in the ever changing landscape. The significance of tides extends beyond their impact on coastal environments and human activities. Tides also play a role in regulating the Earth's climate. The movement of tidal currents helps to distribute.
understanding the science of tides, we gain a deeper appreciation for the natural world and our place in it. Tides connect us to the rhythms of the earth and the cosmos, reminding us of the interconnectedness of all living things. They inspire us to exploration. 